Ahsoka is a show on Disney Plus. Yeah. That's right. I just watched the first two episodes of Ahsoka. And what is there to say about this show that hasn't already been said by people like Critical Drinker, Nerdrotic, and the rest of the Fellowship and Friday Night Tight crew and some other YouTubers out there? What is there to say that they haven't already said? Not much, honestly. This show is boring. It's too long. It's drawn out. Looks okay. I have no real complaints about the looks. But man, is it just a lot of unnecessary establishing shots. Really slow thinking exactly what they want to say dialogue. You what I did there? It is just droning on. It's two episodes, almost two hours, and fuck all happens. Fuck all happens. Alrighty. Where to begin? I guess the title crawl in the first episode, which looked cheap and like anybody could do it. Anybody with access to, like, I don't know, Premiere Pro could do it. Hmm. Okay. How is... So at the beginning... The captain of the ship says he's going to call the bluff of the approaching. It's this rebel ship. There's a ship approaching. And they go, oh, you look, we got Jedi, old Jedi codes. These must be Jedi. We should let them on. And the captain's like, I'm going to call their bluff. Let them on. How is, how is doing what they want you to do calling a bluff? It's not. It just isn't. And why would you? And so the captain says, I know you're not a Jedi. And so the pra the apprentice girl lady just goes, all right, I'm going to start killing everybody. And the captain turns around with a gun, leaving other presumably also powerful man behind his back to just then go like, nope, I'm going to take the gun and choke you out. Like, why would you turn your back to him? Why wouldn't you start trying to shoot that guy immediately? Have your men be you, under the assumption that your men can somehow handle her, even though you, if you knew anything about a Jedi, I knew you shouldn't have let them on your ship to fucking begin with. I don't even know if I... This is going to be a long video if I sit here and go through all my notes. And you know what? I don't think I'm... This is going to be haphazardly. And this is going to be just what it is. I don't even really want to tell the plot or a synopsis. It's just... It's, it's boring. It's boring. Just all like a cat walking in the background. It's fine. So... This show's weird. It's like it's fan baiting a show no one's ever seen. Because Rebels was not popular. Clone Wars has got is more of a cult following. It's it was somewhat popular. It kept, went on to the bigger Disney network. Rebels was Disney XD. And then the weird final season. I did, I didn't even want I watched like the, maybe one or two seasons of Rebels. I somewhat know who the characters are, but I'm not going to do the homework to watch Ahsoka to know everything's going on. There's There are ways to write in recap and telling people who haven't seen Rebels who these people are, what's going on. Like, all the stuff to Thrawn and Ezra and everything and the mural that looks like the cartoon, and it's like, wow, this is, wasn't she supposed to be, like, a really good artist in this cartoon? Now you're saying in the live action, no, she just draws like it is the cartoon? So now it looks fucking childish, because the cartoon animation was terrible to begin with. I hate... I hate how much they make you have to rely on knowing Rebels and everything that happened there. And it's, 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 it didn't need to happen. The 50 minutes of the first episode, you could have done about 5 minutes to recap all the important shit of Rebels and then moved on. And had the pacing be better. Not all these long drawn out establishing. Ooh Ahsoka walking up stuff shots. You don't need to do any of that. 
and Ahsoka herself. Oof. I wasn't a huge fan of her to begin with. And I know that's the story of Ahsoka, is people didn't like her to begin with, and then as she ma character matured and moved on, they started to really like her. And it, there's in certain corners of the internet, if you even mention Ahsoka, a certain you-know-who will show up, and we all know he really likes her. I, I just, I, even at the end, I did not like Ahsoka that much. She breaks continuity. She should be dead. If she ever existed, she should have died. And not in Rebels. Like, she should have died, like, Order 66, all that stuff. By the way, apparently Order 66 was to kill just exactly 66 Jedi and let the other 100,000 live and flee and get away. It's good fucking God. Every one of their mothers a Jedi, and there's so many Jedi still alive. And it's ridiculous. And I'm just and I'm just scratching a dog's butt and get over it. He's happy. He he hears me angry at the show and he's trying to calm me down. That's a good boy. No, I Rosario Dawson is a good actress, but you know, once once Dave Filoni wrote Ahsoka to be an adult, he suddenly forgot how to write her or adult how to write adults or something because now she's a plank. She's a nothing. She seems kind of angry all the time or manly stoic and she's just I don't she's just it doesn't feel like the same person. It's a super boring character in the show itself. Her Hera and fucking what's her name? The one who's the really the star of the show. Sabine. They're th the characters are essentially the same. They're stoic female character who don't need no man. They're all really wanting Ezra back. <laughs> she... The actress is almost 50? She Her running's awkward. Her trying to be somewhat... Acrobatic Ahsoka doesn't look good when she's fighting like the droid stuff. She does a little spin move. It looks, it looks like a middle-aged woman trying to do a cartwheel. It because that's what it is. And I'm sorry, I, I know people loved her in Mandalorian season two, but I don't know if it's because of the volume or the effects or something. Because the volume, the volume, while very cool piece of technology is very small. So action scenes look terrible. I, I, that's where I have to give some credit to Rosario Dawson, not just because it's her age and awkwardness in fighting. Like, she's on a very cramped, small set, and they try to do so much post-editing, too. Like, it's... She has to be so confused about what to actually do with her body. Like... The jumping just looks... It looks like they had Rosario just go like... Huh? Like, not even really jump. She just did, like, a straight body movement, and then they just, like, after effects blurred her up and said, ah, look, she jumped. And it's like... It just looks so jarring and weird, and everything looks compact. Even though they try to make the volume look like you're in like, a big field in the world, everything feels like you're like this because of how small the volume, like, walking around stage actually is. Like, all the... All the... All the lightsaber fighting, everything, just looks and feels compact and weird and not fluid. Like in so in episode one, the evil bad man, Jedi. He's not an Inquisitor. He's a Jed. He's a former Jedi who, maybe Sith, or mercenary. It's very unclear what he actually is, but it's heavily implied that he's a Sith. He blocks blasters like, huh, yeah, uh, uh. and it's like, okay, even in the cartoon, they weren't that robotic with it. Like, it used to be cool and an art and a skill to blocking the blasters, not just like, I'm going to put a lightsaber here, and then in post, they'll have all the blasters hitting it. 
And I love the actor who plays him too. Like he was great in Rome. He's by and he's by far the best actor of this entire series so far. But he seems really awkward in this costume. Like I don't know if they put a bunch of padding around him or something, but he's he's standing perfectly straight. And it honestly, it feels like, you know, like a kid who got a cheap costume of like a cheap cloak costume and keeps saying like if I move my body at all, the cloak's gonna fall off. So he tries to stay like super rigid and straight, and every time he walks, he's just like And he's got like big pointy shoulders, and it's like it it looks like he's afraid that if he actually moves his body in a normal way, that his cloak's just gonna fall off. And he was told in the shot, you're supposed to be like big, cloaked, and menacing. And it's like, so it's just like all of the costume looks awkward. Like Rosario Dawson looks maybe just her old age is how she moves her body, but she looks very uncomfortable in her outfit and her suit. It. Like, maybe just all the hair makeup and prosthetics. Like, she's afraid if she shakes too much, the hair's gonna fall off. Like, everybody looks so uncomfortable in their costumes. Yeah, it's just, it does not translate well from the cartoon, which looks like shit to begin with, into live action. Everything's dark when the cartoon was bright. Even, like, the actual Star Wars movies, I didn't feel like they were this dark. Like, they put a graying filter over everything. Like, the sets look fine. A lot of the volume shots look fine. They seem to have taken their time with these with these with this show more than they did, like, Kenobi, which has some really jonky looking, that's clearly volume stuff. This one looks a little bit better, but they put, like, a grayness filter over everything or something. It's like, or, like, or they were like, oh, yeah, this looks great in person. And then someone said, no, I want this to be darker. And it's like, it doesn't need to be darker. It needs to feel like it's a real life, like it's a real thing. Um, yeah, slow, the pacing is terrible, you spend like 15 minutes at the opening just watching Ahsoka not talk and try to find a map. <laughs> I apologize of how in out, out of order and unsync this entire rant. This is not a review anymore, this is a rant. Goes into. Why is everything ancient? How come Dave Filoni's only idea for Star Wars is this other ancient thing we didn't know about is now a thing that we're learning about? Why is the map? Like, Thrawn hasn't been banished for thousands upon thousands of years. He wasn't banished in the Clone Wars. With the fucking evil sisters. Why is there a map to Thrawn in an ancient witch sister temple thing with elaborate traps and puzzles to get to it. Why is there a map to Thrawn to begin with? Like, who said, oh yes, he's vanished, I'm gonna make a map to him. These people from another galaxy, I guess, that I was hinted at in episode 2, by the way, there's another galaxy in Star Wars now. How come these beings from the galaxy? I guess we're folklore, bedtime stories of Jedi. Create this map to Thrawn, came all the way over here, put it into an ancient temple, reactivated the puzzles. They, there was just puzzles that conveniently added up to looking like the map they were hiding because there was like map orbs being held by statues. Wait, what? You, they shouldn't be ancient. This stuff should just be hidden somewhere. Or city has it. There should, one, there shouldn't be map to begin with. And if there is, it should be hidden in a more modern way. Buried somewhere. If you really want to go doing something, like it doesn't have to be in a temple. Or if it isn't a temple, it's not in behind a bunch of puzzles elaborately designed and aesthetically made to look like the thing you're hiding. It doesn't make any fucking sense. By the way, they left this and told the freaking lady that was there. Or she heard it was there because she is 
the great granddaughter of one of those wizards or something. Either way, she knew the map was there. So this was all off screen during the title crawl. It was. She knew where the map was. And Ahsoka kidnapped her, did some vaguely unspeakable torture, as mentioned, I guess, into that, to get the information where the map is. Why didn't she have the map on her? Why didn't she use it? Why is she just now interested in getting the map back and then going and finding Thrawn? Like, was she waiting for him to go, it's time? And then he'll, he'll, he'll be like, okay. Where are you? And he's like, look at the map. It's like, but if you can communicate to me through dreams or fate or whatever the bullshit excuse in episode two was given, why can't you just tell him I'm three stars left to the right and keep going straight? Like how if there's some sort of communication, why was a map needed? Why is she getting it now? Was there was that whole bullshit time travel thing like, oh, he went back in the world between worlds went back in time, put the map while the temple was being constructed, and left it. It has too many fucking questions and shit, and for people that don't actually know, fucking rebels are just gonna sit here like, what? Okay, there's just a map here? Fine. Whatever. As soon as you give it some thought, it's like, what the what in the no? So dumb. And on the ancient sister's point, I fucking hate these magical bullshit sisters. We already had the Force and Space Wizards in Star Wars. We don't need witches that have vague green smoke and flame as magic who can talk between galaxies because fate is intertwined. It, they make... It's the most bullshit people ever. Like, the Force had some bullshit stuff. Or the Force didn't have some bullshit stuff. They added on a bunch of bullshit stuff later. But now they have bullshit magic. They just go, how did you know this? Because magic. How come, how come you can do that? Because magic. Oh, you can do that now? Yes, magic. Like, oh, come on. Bring back Darth Maul, who was cut in half because magic. And by the way, death and lightsabers mean and do fuck all in Star Wars now. Because Sabine got fucking gut stabbed slightly more to the left than where Qui-Gon Jinn did. But she got stabbed and survived. So Qui-Gon's just a bitch. Just people get cut in half, stabbed. At this point, I'm waiting for someone to get beheaded and still survive. Like, lightsabers mean nothing. They do nothing. Apparently... They don't actually cut any people. They just kind of make them go sleepy time. And they just fall down and sleep. Because I mean, it might be a little bit of blood. But you're pretty much just falling asleep. That doesn't actually do anything. I'm surprised no, it, people don't actually go. I'm surprised people actually go ow when it touches them. They just go like oh. And then just go oh. See, I'm so tired now and fall asleep. Because that's all it seems like fucking lightsabers do. Um, Whatever happened to Force Run. That'd be a, that would have been great for Ahsoka to use, and then you can just have it blur out so you actually don't see Rosario Dawson running. Whew. And she runs a couple times. In the first episode, she runs away from droids that self, self-destruct, self that explode. They explode, and you see it, and you go, what an odd-sized explosion from these five little droids that just leveled out half the planet like a nuke. But she's running from like the center of the temple all the way to the end of the temple and jumps onto a ship just before the like blast and the explosion hits. And it looks awkward. And in the second episode, she's running. She jumps out of a window and starts running towards a ship that's launching off. And you're sitting there going like, ah, man, I remember in a lot of the video games and in episode one, they had like fast, you know, force dashing. Why the fuck isn't she using that? And you can do your bullshit when force powers are activated, the camera becomes blurry thing, and just make it so you don't see Rosario Dawson running. But you could have caught the transport, and you didn't have to have this weird chopper throwing it thing when it's like, why isn't there just like an air gun? Or why isn't there 
some sort of gun that can shoot a tracking device. Why do you have to go up close and let a droid throw it onto a ship? Whatever thing that they did. Yeah, the fighting was bare terrible. It looked okay, except for the lightsaber fights and the force powers. They didn't look great. There were... Watch something like EFAP for all the freaking continuity errors, because there's just so many, and I don't want to make an hour-long video. We make hour-long gameplay videos on this channel. We don't need hour-long review things. I don't even know how I'm going to edit this in, or if it's just going to be my face ranting for only something minutes, but... The state of Star Wars is not good. The state of Star Wars is not good. There's so many Jedi, there's bullshit force powers. It... Fucking magic sisters are terrible. There's another galaxy. Even though the galaxy of Star Wars is supposed to be vast and huge, there's only five planets, and we've seen those five planets. So instead of saying, let's go to a different planet into the outskirts of the system, which are, have been largely unexplored, no. We have to up the ante and go, he's super duper banished. He's in a different galaxy. Why? The galaxy of Star Wars is Tatooine. You can expand the galaxy. You don't need to add a second galaxy. That you apparently need a supersized version of the big ring from episode 2 as nostalgia bait to be able to go to. Which, by the way, nice job with the name. Or the Eye of Siron is what it's called. Gee, sounds a lot like the Eye of Sauron. Or Sauron, whatever, the fucking Lord of the Rings thing. Because we're so good at naming stuff here at Disney. Ugh. It's, there's so much weird nostalgia bait. From Rebels. From Star Wars itself. There's no real expansion of stuff. They have droids there just because Star Wars needs droids. There aren't a whole lot of aliens, even though there's supposed to be a bunch of aliens. The, only, the most aliens there are are Ahsoka. And Hera. And by the way, Hera, the actress, ooh, doesn't know what emotions are. The most bland, nothing fucking reactions in acting ever. Yeah, distance and time doesn't make any sense. They show leaving the Phantom, going on to this big, you know, getting shown around this whole shipbuilding facility. And it turns out the shipbuilding facility is a bunch of has a bunch of imperial loyalists to it, and people start running. Oh, they have to chase the ship that's going away because it looks like that ship's about to go to the bad guys. He's like, "Quick, I'll go meet you at the Phantom." Soka jumps out a window because the next scene, pairs at the Phantom goes and like the sh transport ship has barely even taken off, and it's like you had to take like an entire like speeder ride from the t like the whole planet is the fucking building facility. What do you mean? The Phantom was right out back. So the tour was, we're going to start here where your ship is. We're going to go around like this so you can see stuff. And then come back to my office, which is, happens to be right next to the Phantom. In case you have to run to it to chase the baddies. Like, they, they established that they were going to fucking Sabine's room like ten times in episode one. Just to really make sure, you know, this is where we're going. But they couldn't establish... Where shit was in this building construction plan, if so when the chase scene goes down, it makes some sense. No, couldn't do that. It's the Sabine show. She's the one that decrypts the map because she's an artist. Yep. This is one plus one equals three. It, they and they don't make any, they keep saying like oh Sabine was the best one to decrypt the map and they never explain it why other than a throwaway line like you have the artist eye you tell me if you don't know who Sabine is because you didn't watch Rebels you're gonna sit here like she, so she's like a technology expert like oh she's a Mandalorian it's like okay well if you've seen Mandalorian seasons one through three you know there's one smart Mandalorian one lucky Mandalorian and the rest of them are fucking idiots. 
And in season three, the smart one that's supposed to be the smart one also became a lucky idiot. It doesn't make any fucking sense. So, all right, two more things, and then I'll leave you all alone. And if you've made it this far with this ranting, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. But the ship at the beginning that had let the Jedi on because they're dumb. They had Ahsoka come to it after finding the map because they want to talk about, hey, there's these people. They seem to be Jedi. Do you know them? And they did an establishing shot where Ahsoka's ship was flying by it and it had debris flying all around it. It had blasters marks on the outside. And you're like, okay. I guess they disabled the ship so they could get away sooner or something. Like, they killed all the people. They not killed the people. Don't matter. But the point is, you look at it and you go, why the fuck? So they got back in their little shuttle and just after getting the prisoner, came out and just started blasting the outside of it. Just gave it, like, little score marks so a little bit of debris could come around. And it's just like, it's like someone hit it with a wrench. You're just like, fuck the ship in particular. They didn't destroy it. They didn't blow it up. They just took the little shuttle and just did a little pew pew pew. All right. Fuck you. I'm out. But you guys, I'm going home. Like, it just... <laughs> like, it seemed unnecessary. It's just like, I, you can kind of your head can't be like, they disabled it so they could get away and not have the Republic alerted sooner. But it's like, it just looked, it just didn't, it looked, it just didn't look good. Um, and then the introduction of Sabine. You're supposed to be like, oh, look, she's a badass rebel who's always, she's always so smirky at herself because mm, I did a naughty thing. Uh, she is supposed to be attending a ceremony. Everyone's saying, thanks, characters from Rebels, for saving us from the Empire. They do a big speech at the beginning. The Mr. Krabs does a big speech. The guy who plays Mr. Krabs, isn't it? He's just like, years ago, we thank all these commanders and all these people in this great team that's like freed us from the Empire. And when you think one of them, the commanders who are here, Sabine, blah, 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 and I'm just sitting here like, okay. Yeah, I get. I haven't seen the last season of Rebels, but I'm sure they did something great that helped out the Rebellion, the Ethan Vampire, and whatnot. But I feel like you should have, they should have acknowledged the fact that, like, Luke, Lon, Luke, Han, and Leia are the actual ones that defeated the Empire, that killed the Emperor, and Vader, and will turn Vader, and they destroy the Death Stars and everything. Like, yeah, Ezra did the whole banning Thrawn thing or whatever. That's great. He basically, they, you know, these guys took out the number one, and then this team took out the number two that would have taken over for number one. And, you know, kept the Empire going, so, they, you know, we, we tag-teamed them. Great job, everybody. Yeah. But, like, Luke still exists in the fucking universe. And at this point, he's still alive. Like, you can have a shitty Rebels version of him painted onto the mural, too. For him, Hanalea. Like, they would be the most famous people in the entire galaxy. I get that this is the planet that, like, from the, that Ezra lived on. And did all this, and this was the planet that's very important to Rebels itself. But Luke, Han, and Leia would be like the people, the rock stars. They would know who those three are, and they would love them just as much as Ezra and Hera and all those fuckers. Why? When we're doing a show around the time that Luke and everyone exists. Do we not acknowledge him at all? Ever. Because it's fucking Ahsoka show. And Dave Filoni wants Ahsoka to be more popular and beloved than Luke. 
because he can't let his own characters die. I wouldn't be surprised if fucking dude bro Kane Freddy Prince Jr. characters came back. Like it's ridiculous. Death means nothing in Star Wars. And it all right. I know it's not much. It wasn't really a review. It was more just a ch shouting about stuff incoherently and in weird mix up orders. But the episode's been out for a while. If you're into this stuff, I'm sure you've heard some things about it before. Hopefully, you just inter you just liked this me ranting about how bad it was. Maybe hopefully gave you one or two insights you didn't see. It's not a whole lot different from anything else that I've that I have seen on the internet so far. But thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me think about the episode. Am I just am I unnecessarily angry about it? Or did I work myself up a little too much? Maybe. I don't know. Let me know what you think. And I will see you in the next review, video, or let's play. Bye.